Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to explain how to diagnose and test uh, when you have PW089 fuel pressure control valve fault code. Uh, when you have this fault code, this problem is coming most likely from the fuel pressure control valve. So as you see, this engine comes with a GDI fuel system, gasoline direct injection fuel system. So when engine is running, low pressure fuel pump provides the fuel to high pressure pump and the high pressure pump, which is driven by the camshaft, provides the fuel to the fuel rail. And of course we have the high pressure injectors as well. But because we don't need that high pressure all the times because the, the pressure which is provided to the fuel rail can be different between 40 to 150 bar from idle to high load. So ECM should be able to control the fuel pressure and it can do it by controlling this fuel pressure control valve. So if the fuel pressure control valve is faulty, for sure ECM cannot have that control on the fuel pressure anymore. That's why you need to check it out. So first of all, if you have this fault code, you need to check the connector on the fuel pressure control valve, this part uh, on the high pressure pump. So this is the one. So check the connector, make sure connector is tight and seated properly and there is nothing wrong with that. So disconnect the connector. There is a locking tab in here. Press the locking tab, disconnect the connector and check inside the connector to make sure there is no dirt or moisture inside the connector because sometimes if moisture gets into the connector, it will cause the fault code as well. And it can be for any reason, sometimes for washing the engine uh, which I don't really recommend. Uh, moisture can get into the connector and cause the fault code. As you see the wiring diagram on the screen, there are two wires in the connector. These two wires are connected to engine control module. One is for opening the control valve. The other one is actually for closing the control valve. Basically for making sure if these two wires are okay because this is part of the test for checking the fuel pressure control valve operation. Uh, you can check the voltage on the wiring as well. For example, if you are checking the opening terminal, as you see on the screen, the voltage is gonna be between zero to 0 0.6 volt. And if you are checking the closing terminal, the voltage is gonna be 0 0.6 volt. Ignition switch must be on and you are checking the voltage just like this. And if you go, for example, for this wire, as you see, I have 0 0.69, which is exactly within the range. But if the voltage is not exactly what you are after, you have to check the wiring from here all the way to the ECM for checking the open circuit. And I'm gonna show you how to do it. For this test, you have to turn the ignition switch off and battery negative terminal should be disconnected as well because we are trying to disconnect the ECM connector. All good. So this is the ECM, disconnect the ECM connector. As you see, we are looking for uh, the connector E triple G double uh, A and the pins that we are after is pin 85 and 86. Okay, just lift this one and the connector is gonna come off. This is the first one and the second one. First of all, we need to see which connector is actually the one we are after. So this is our connector. We are looking for pin number 86 for positive side and 85 for negative side. So I'm gonna insert this one into 85. You can back probe it as well, but these probes are really tiny. Even if you uh, probe it from the front side, they're not gonna damage the pins. So I'm locating the 85. We have the numbers on the pins as well. I can read the 85 from here. So yellow one on 85 and the green one on 86, okay? And now I can check the continuity or resistance from this end uh, to the other end on fuel pressure control valve. First of all, I check the continuity for open circuit. 
test it. All right, I can hear the continuity sound. So the first one for 85, this pin and the other one right here. So as long as I can hear the continuity sound, it means okay. We can read the resistance as well. It's less than one ohms. If you are measuring something really high or you got no reading, it means this wire is open. And the other one, actually from here to 86, I can hear the continuity sound as well. So it means the, there is no open circuit and the resistance is actually within the range is less than one ohm. There is no high resistance in this case. So basically, this is how you can find the end of the wiring. Two wires over there, and as I showed you on the wiring diagram, 85, 86. On this connector, we had the connector code, and we located the wires just like this. But sometimes problem could be from the uh, fuel pressure control valve itself. So we can check the internal resistance of this valve just like this. Connector is disconnected. So as you see, resistance is something less than one ohms, which is okay, it's within the range, because workshop manual shows us something approximately one ohm or less, which is okay. If you get no reading, it means there is open circuit inside the valve itself. Uh, that's why you have the fault. And sometimes on the wiring itself, we have the short circuit. Uh, one of these wires could be shorted to ground uh, in between when it's going to the ECM. So in this case, you can actually check the resistance between each one of those two wires and body ground. In this case, you can check the resistance between each one of these two wires and the body ground. You should get no reading. If you get any reading, it means that wire is already shorted to ground. That's why you need to go back and find the short wire and get it fixed and now let's see how we can test the rail pressure uh, with the scan tool I have already connected my scan tool ignition switch is on scan tool is reading the car as you see scan tool is reading my car Kia Rio 2012 also as you see car has GDI 1.6 engine On system selection, I'm going to go for engine. Now let's go for data stream. So on data stream, I'm going to go for these items. Actual engine speed. Filtered rail pressure rail value. And fuel rail pressure sensor voltage. So I'm going to start the engine. So as you see, here is the engine RPM. I have the rail pressure value over here, rail pressure sensor voltage, and this is a set point for the fuel rail pressure. As you see, engine is running at idle. It's just trying to reach to the idle because I just started the engine. The RPM is a little high. Engine is trying to uh, keep the rail pressure set at 40 bar. And as you see, it's almost 40. Uh, bars. So when you are checking the GDI system with the scan tool, uh, you're going to need to make sure when engine is running at idle, the pressure over here is 40 bar. So when you see the pressure over here is not at 40 bar, it's at 4.5 bar. It means that uh, high pressure system is not working at all. Of course, in case of failure, if the high pressure system is not working, the low pressure is still is going to start the engine and you can drive the car but you shouldn't expect that much power that you were getting with the high pressure pump. As you see, engine RPM is dropping to normal right now, but still we have 40 bar. It means that ECM is receiving a signal from fuel rail pressure sensor and is actually controlling the fuel pressure regulator valve. So this one is actually confirming the fuel rail pressure sensor operation. And this one is confirming the fuel pressure regulator valve operation as well, which should be at 40 bar. And of course, when you are driving at maximum load, this one is going to go up to uh, 140, 150 bar. So for example, when I'm accelerating, you see the pressure is going to go high. When I release the gas pedal, it's going to go back to normal, which is 40 bar. Thank you very much everyone for watching. Please don't forget to watch the channel page for more videos like this.